Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. Uh, and today I want to do something really low level and look at how Vim saves files on the disk um, and specifically what it does with backup copies during the save process. Um, and the reason this is interesting is because it can explain bugs in your tooling. Uh, if you ever have like a watch process that's compiling files whenever you change them, you may have run into the situation where for some reason it doesn't see the changes that you're making in Vim. Um, and so now I want to explain why that can happen. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is with this little demo here. Uh, we have here a JavaScript file up here on the top left. Um, and we have a little watch script that all, all it does is watch that file. Um, whenever it's changed on the disk, it's going to print something out to the console. So let's run that and we'll see it in action. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to add some stuff. I'm going to save the buffer. And you saw it and noticed that I changed the buffer. Um, and I can do more. And once again, we see the change. So, so far, so good. That's working. Um, However, I can break it easily by changing a setting in Vim, and I'm going to do that now. Uh, at the moment, I have backup copy set to yes, so I'm going to set it to no. And I'm going to change the file again, um, another change. And you notice that it uh, did see the change. Um, this time it's noted that it didn't just change, but there's been a rename that's happened here. Um, I'm going to change the, change the file again. Saved it but nothing happened. The watch script didn't see it anymore. So some explanation is in order here. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna show you what the backup copy setting actually means. Um, and if you look here, you'll see um, it's got these three values. Um, it can be set to yes, like we had it originally. Uh, it can be set to no, um, or it can be set to auto. Um, so yes, what does yes mean? Uh, yes means that whenever you write a buffer, Vim's actually going to create a new file on disk with a different name. And it's basically going to do kind of like a, a test write. It's going to copy the contents of the buffer as they previously existed into this test file. And if that worked, then it's going to try the real write um, to the real file and it's going to overwrite it. So basically it's going to truncate it back to zero bytes and, and write the whole thing out. Uh, and then if that works, it'll dispose of the backup depending on your settings. Um, if the value is set to no, it's going to take a slightly different strategy. It's actually going to take the file that you're trying to save. It's going to move it. It's going to do a rename. Uh, and then it's going to write the new contents of the buffer into the place on the file system where the old file used to live, like under the same name. Um, and that's the key to why it, this can break a watch script. So I'm going to pull my, my watch script up again. Uh, so what does this watch script do? Um, although we're watching a file name, uh, what's actually happening under the covers is it's looking at the inode that is associated on the file system uh, with this name. And so when Vim does a rename, uh, it's actually moving the file to another place in the file system. Uh, it has a different name now, but it's still the same inode. And our watch script is going to continue to watch that inode. Um, but of course, Vim then writes a brand new file in place where the old one used to be under that same name. And that means uh, that the thing that we're seeing in Vim, which is called sum.js, is not actually the same file that we were looking at only seconds before, uh, because that inode has been moved somewhere else, and we've got a new file, new inode, and Vim can't see the changes anymore. Um, and so that's why uh, setting up backup copy uh, to yes fixes the problem, uh, because the inode never changes, even though we're creating a separate backup copy on the side. Uh, and we're overriding the contents of the file on disk, that file stays where it is, the inode is the same, the same inode is associated with the same name, um, and both Vim and our watch script can see it. Um, and then finally there's auto, uh, which is worth mentioning because uh, that's the default in most cases. Um, on the machines that I've tried, both Linux and Mac OS, auto ends up being the same as no. So if you're using a file watching tool that watches files by inode, then backup copy auto or backup copy no might be breaking your tool. Um, so I've got another pane over here so we can see this kind of in action before us. So um, I've got a couple of very simple copies of Vim up the top. Uh, this is NeoVim uh, started with uh, dash u none. So there's no plugins here just to keep it simple. I mean, I've got just these two files here. And if you look at these two buffers, um, you'll see that uh, on the left, I have backup copy set to no. And on the right, I have uh, backup copy set to yes. So we can observe how the two behave. Uh, and what we have down the bottom here is actually uh, strace, which is a 
tool on Linux that you can use to see the system calls that a process is making. So when I save these files, we'll be able to compare what Vim's doing in each case. Um, it's a bit hard to read because there's like a huge amount of output, but I'll see, <laughs> I'll see if we can make sense of it. So we're gonna start with the one on the left first, which is the one that's broken. The backup copy, no. Um, and I'm gonna save this file and then we're gonna look at the output. Uh, so you'll see here, well, at least we'll try to see, uh, this one, there we go. There's that, there's that rename call that I was talking about. So basically, uh, first of all, Vim is going to unlink or delete the previous backup file, which as you can see is uh, named after the buffer, but with a tilde on the end. Um, it says here no end, so that file didn't actually exist. Uh, but once it's gotten rid of that file, if it's there, um, it's now going to rename the file that we're trying to save from the original name to the new name with the tilde on the end. Uh, then it's going to try to create a brand new file uh, with uh, write-only permissions, uh, setting it you know, to truncate um, at zero bytes. Uh, and it's going to write in the new content. So you can see that did that there with this write call. Um, and then uh, that's this might be somewhere else where it's you know, deleting the backup. Here's the backup that it tried to delete now that it served its purpose. But you can see there in that ser series of events that uh, you know the unlink followed by the rename followed by the opening a new file created a new inode with the contents, and that's why our watch script can't follow it uh, when we do a write with backup copy set to no. Now let's look over this side uh, and do the same thing. This time backup copy set to yes. And I'm gonna write the file again and we'll analyze what we see. So here once again, uh, it is trying to unlink a backup that may be there, but there's no rename here. Um, you notice it messes with the, the mod, the, the permit file, sy file system permissions of the backup file, the owner. Don't really know what the point of all that is. Uh, but then here, um, you can see it's reading the, doing a read-only open of the, uh, the file. Um, and then it's reopening it for writing. Um, well, it's reopening re the backup file for writing. Uh, doing some more, whoops, I went a bit too far there. Um, doing a little bit more manipulation. I'm trying to find the part where it actually writes. Uh, then, then it write, uh, opens the original file again. And truncating it. So starting at byte zero, it's gonna put the contents in the file um, and then it closes it. So you, there's no rename in that sequence. I mean, it still creates a backup file, but it's just there in case the power goes down or something, I don't know. So you may be wondering, why does Vim default to the backup copy no behavior if it can break things? Um, and the truth is, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, when I looked at this trace and did some reading online about this, I thought that it might be because uh, Doing it this way with the rename uh, might be a little bit less work. But then when I look at the work it's actually doing, I can't actually see any real advantage there because um, as you can see, it's just deleting the old backup, uh, moving the original file into, into the place of the previous backup, uh, opening a new copy of the buffer and then writing the stuff out into it. And that's really all. Um, and if you compare that to the amount of work it's doing in the opposite case, it's really a comparable amount of work. Um, and so I was thinking, well, you know, maybe maybe if in this case uh, it's, for example, rereading the contents of the original buffer um, in order to write out the backup copy, but it's it's not. Um, so in terms of performance, I feel like they should be equal, um, and I, that in turn leads me to conclude that there's no real good reason to ever have backup copy set to no. You may as well just always have it set to yes. Um, and the other thing is, I'm not even sure that this whole backup thing is useful uh, you know the idea being that if vim somehow failed during the creation of one of these backups you might lose the, the stuff that you're working on um, but given that almost everything i edit in vim is in version control i, I feel like i could probably get back whatever i, I wanted <laughs> if there was this like crazy file system corruption or cosmic ray hit the cpu in the middle of a save like vim just tends not to crash just because you're saving a file so it just seems like a fair bit of work and redundancy for a cataclysmic event that basically never happens. So um, while backup copy being set to yes unbreaks my watch script, I'm wondering if I even need the backup copy at all. Um, so if you have an opinion on that, write a comment. Uh, but I, I am seriously considering just, just turning it off. Because when I, when I look at it, like for example, if backup copy is yes, like what would happen if this backup weren't made? 
and you can see that it, uh, you know it opens a new file with a uh, this this name where, where where's the open call there's the call it, it, you know creates this backup copy and it writes the contents into there uh, and then where is the original one. 20, oh no, this is this is the original. This is where it overwrites the original one. So um, yeah, if that write were to fail path, part way through, like you might wind up with your original file with nothing in it, or maybe partial stuff in it, or garbage. But if that happened, like first of all, I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> and second of all, if it did happen, like you might be able to recover something from the swap file. So yeah, that's that's what my thinking is at the moment. Um, and if you want to be the first to know of any changes that I make, uh, just go. Have a look at my dot files. So uh, I'll put a link to this in the in the description. But basically, under settings, this is where all my backup stuff is. So uh, watch that file if you if you want to know what happens in the future of my backup settings. But anyway, I hope that was interesting uh, and useful to you, perhaps. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Hello everyone. <laughs> Hi, Hi, it's Greg Harvey here. Then I'll open the screencast. Hey everyone, Hello, everyone. Greg Harvey here. Today we're going to talk about the way to copy files. Today we're going to talk about copies of files when you back up copies. And this can be relevant when you're watching. Currently, freaking. Uh, depending on the kind of software you... and then if that write is successful it'll kind of do an atomic switch where it will uh, it'll actually that's not exactly right no, no, no it is right yeah fuck yeah I'm going to have to I'm going to say it's all over again the entire buffer uh, from the original file um, write it all uh, into actually let me rethink about that it's terrible